Now I keep getting asked the same question. Is this bike good off-road? Is that bike good off-road? I plan on using it for hunting. How much power do I actually need? Well, today I'm gonna to show you a couple of clips of me taking a few different bikes off-road up a steep hill with minimal traction so you can see how much power you might actually need to do that. First bike up is the EUY bike, the S4 Pro Max dual motor, all-wheel drive, 3,000 peak watts. I'm curious. I'm curious how much power you actually need to do off-road loose terrain hill climbs. So I'm gonna try to find that out today. So this is the first bike we're gonna test. I'm gonna test a couple other ones too. I might do the Stellar Falcon from Ufree and then also the Swift Horse from Free Sky. But let's go try this bike and see how it does on this steep off-road hill climb over here that I did not too long ago with the Predator bike from Wired. And I said in that video that it was just overkill. There was so much power in that all-wheel drive Predator. I had to tune it way, way down to lessen the wheel spin on it. And I felt, I think I said, you don't need that much in the video. You could get by with like, you know, 1200, 1300 watts or something like that. So I'm, I'm testing it today. I wanna know, is that, was that a true statement? I don't know if you can see what I'm on. This is basically slippery pine needles and dry leaves. All right, let's give this hill climb a shot. Now I, I could get a running start at it and probably have a much smoother run up the hill, but I want to do it more slow speed. Like if you were on really tricky terrain, you want to take it slow. That's what I want to try to replicate here. I'm not going to pedal. I'm just going to have my feet on the ground, kind of like walking myself up. Let's give it a shot here. This stuff is so slippery. These pine needles. Yeah, I'm just spinning out like crazy in the front. So even this is more power than you need. I'm turning the throttle like halfway and the front wheel is just spinning out like crazy so this thing is way more than enough power to climb that hill and i was also able to make this steep little hill over here with the predator let's try it on the s4 we get a little bit of a run at it and it's like a wall that goes straight up there so let's give it a shot here here we go yep we just got to dig the last four or five feet there up the hill. It's a pretty steep wall of a hill. I mean, let's try it again one more time. Yep, pretty much no effort from me. Blasted right up the hill, no problem. So the EUI bike, S4 Pro Max with 3000 watts, ample, ample power for off-road. If you're curious what the top speed is, there you go. I'm at 30, 31. 32, I mean, good speed. That seems to be about it right there, about 32.9. There's 33, 34, I mean, it found some more there. Low 30s, good power. It's a good little bike, man, I mean. All right, next up, we're gonna give this one a try. This is the Free Sky Swift Horse. We've got a single motor bike, a thousand watt rear hub motor, and it's a 30 amp controller. So we're, we're peaking probably 1600 watts-ish on that rear motor. So this will be the first ever single motor e-bike I've tried on this steep hill. I don't know if it can make it or not. All right, here we go. So for attempt number one, I'm gonna try to do it the way I was doing the all-wheel drive bikes. And that is just hit the throttle and have my feet kind of on the ground walking the bike up and see, see if it'll climb it. So here we go. This is like 1600 watts, one wheel, rear wheel drive. Does it have the power? It's dying out. The rear wheel is spinning and it's struggling. It's, it's like failing. <laughs> there we go. Barely. You can hear the motor kind of shuddering. It does not like this. I pretty much just stood all my weight up off the bike and walked it up. So that was a struggle. I don't think this would be ideal. I'm going to try to pedal. I'm going to get a little bit of a run and pedal. See if I can make it that way. There we go. All right, pedaling. Yeah, I did it. it. The back wheel had plenty of power and I didn't really lose traction. So that's the way to do it. If you only got one motor, you got to get a run at it and you got to get more power to that rear motor. So I still believe that dual motors are the best because you, I mean, you don't have to pedal. You don't have to help them. That front wheel digging, I don't care that it's spinning. It's digging me to the top and two wheels are better than one. 
We gotta go try this wall climb over here again real quick. All right, here we go. We're gonna get a run at it and I'm gonna pedal. I do not wanna get stuck on this hill part way because I'll fall off. <laughs> All right, let's go. You ready? Can we make it? Oh yeah, with ease. That was so easy. Getting a run at it helps a ton. So as long as you can do the off-road stuff with a, a run at big hills, you'll be fine with just rear motor. If you have to be slow speed, this could never do it slow speed. It would get stuck partway up. The motor just doesn't have the torque. And if you're wondering about top speed on this Free Sky, there's 35. 35.5. Can usually get a little bit higher on long straight downhill stretches all right here's the last bike we're going to test this is the ufree stellar falcon and this is not the bike i would buy to do very steep slow speed off-road uphill climbs not really built for that this is built to be more weekday commuter and then on the weekend it's going to be your you know bike trail bike where you do some mild off-roading i think it'd be perfect for that on this this gnarly stuff over here where we're asking the bike to do all the work, you know, this isn't gonna have the power to do that. It's a 750 watt rear hub motor, peaking, I think about 1200 watts. And it's, I'm not gonna be able to do it throttle only, slow speed. It's, I don't think the motor is gonna take that. So I'm gonna try not to hurt it. <laughs> it's not meant to do this, but I wanna show you anyway. I think it'll do it if we get a run at it. I'm just trying to give you a feel for what different bikes can do and what they can't do. So this one, I love this bike. The Stellar Falcon is a fantastic bike though. That I love the tire choice, 27 and a half by 2.8. They got some nice grippy tread on them. They're not too fat, not too thin, kind of happy medium. I love the fork, love the paint job and grips are nice. Display is nice. Love the Suntour suspension post, makes it such a soft ride, easy step through. Torque sensor or cadence sensor. It's a very nice bike. I'm not even a Ufree affiliate. So if you go buy one of these, I don't get a dime. I don't see any money at all. I'm not their affiliate. I just tell you that because I think really highly of this bike. It's a very, very nice bike. It has the bicycle feel to it. All the fat tire bikes, they just feel like off-road toys to me. It's one of those bikes where I kind of forget I even have a throttle a lot of the times. I end up just pedaling it like a bike. Now, just because I'm curious, I'm going to smash the throttle. I'm not going to pedal at all. I'm just going to try to walk this bike up the hill and see what happens. Get a little bit of a run. That's full power. You can feel the motor kind of peters out right there. I'm, yeah, I'm not, frankly, just not gonna make it at all. I don't think I can do it at all like that. We need to get a run at the hill. Some motors are torquier than others. This one doesn't have the torque to do just something like this. It is really not meant for this, but let's pedal. I'm gonna get a run, pedal, see what happens. Here we go. There you go. No problem. No problem at all. I did it. With a run and some pedaling. That was quite easy, honestly. Very, very easy. I hope you're finding some of this useful. If you have really slow speed stuff you got to do, dual motors, man, that's the way to go. If you have stuff you can get a run at, you can do it with a lot less power than you think. I, could, I think if I could get a bike with 500 to 800 watts and pedal, I think I could probably make that hill. Now there is one other thing to discuss and that's mid-drive bikes. Cause some of you might be saying right now, try a mid-drive. Well, I don't even have one in the garage to try cause I don't really like mid-drives. And I know a lot of people think that's the way to go for a hunting bike or an off-road bike. It's got the most torque for off-road. That's what you need. I completely disagree. <laughs> I don't like mid-drive bikes at all. And here's, I'll tell you why. Yes, they have a ton of torque and a ton of power, but you're running all that power through the drivetrain, okay? That's a lot of pressure on the drivetrain. You have a mid-drive bike, your motor's here at the pedal. So all the pressure from that motor, that 120, 160 Newton meters of torque, whatever it is, that's all right here, putting stress on the front chain ring, on the chain, you could snap a chain. It's stress on that freewheel. If you're shifting and it doesn't have a torque management thing in there to cut the motor power, if you're shifting under motor power and it's, it makes this horrible noise. I don't like it. And I don't think it's good for off-road because I broke a bike right here on this hill that was a mid-drive. I was trying to pedal up this steep, really super steep hill right here. And I got halfway up the hill and I tore the freewheel clean off the hub. 
strip the threads clean off. And then I'm here. I'm three, four miles from home with a broken mid-drive bike and I'm stranded. You can't, because when you break the drivetrain on a mid-drive, you're done. There's no pedaling home. If I do this hill right now and I burn this motor out, I can still pedal this hub drive bike home. You know, the hub drives, they're not turning any of the, the gears in the chain or anything. They're just turning the wheel. So if you mess that up, you can still pedal this thing home. I, you know, that, that bike, it never made it on the channel, honestly. True story, I, it stranded me out here and the company couldn't get me parts to fix it. So I sent it back, broken. <laughs> I never made it on here. But let's get a run at this with a Stellar Falcon and see if it'll climb. Here we go. Oh my God, that was the easiest of all of them. <laughs> by far the easiest of all the bikes climbing that hill. I think it's probably because it's so lightweight, it just floated up that hill. I'm gonna do it again. But I mean, there was little to no stress whatsoever right there. Wow, let's do a little slower. A little bit slower, I'll pedal this time. Oh gosh, yeah, so easy. Yep, very nice. This is, I tell you, this man, this is a great bike. Great little bike. Not for the slow speed rock crawling stuff, but Man, bike trail stuff, this would be very, very nice. All right, let's give you a top speed on the Stellar Falcon as well. So we're about 28-ish. 29, it flashed to 29, right around 28 miles an hour. All right, so here's my conclusions. If you're gonna ride the bike like a little motorcycle or an ATV, you're not gonna pedal at all. I think two motors are better than one. Two wheels turning and digging up the hill more traction. It's kind of like having a four wheel drive in your truck, right? Go more places. Now that EY bike with its 3000 total watts, you know, 1500 in each wheel, it could take me pretty much anywhere I wanted to go without pedaling it. Now, if you take one of those motors away and you have just a 1500 watt rear motor, like what was in the Swift horse, that bike couldn't make the hill at all under motor power alone. I had to get a run at it and pedal as well. So if you're going to go off the beaten path and you're not going to pedal, I like the two motors. Now, if you're going to stay on the paths and the trails and stuff, I think the single motor is gonna be fine. 1500 watt seemed to be enough. Even the 1200 watt power of the U-Free Stellar Falcon had no problem at all taking me up those hills when I was able to get momentum and actually pedal and help the bike, no sweat. So if you're gonna stay on the trails in the past, I think you need far less power than you think. This bike had plenty. Now the mid-drive bikes, I'm not really a big fan of them. I've had a bunch of them. They're just not my favorite because you gotta do a lot of shifting to get the power out of the bike. And I kind of see them just like the rear hub motor bikes. If you're in a spot where you're on paths and trails and stuff and you can keep your momentum up and you can shift and pedal as needed, they're gonna have way, way more power than you actually need. The mid-drive that I broke on that hill, maybe it was just a fluke. I don't know, maybe the manufacturer didn't have that free wheel screwed onto the hub just right and that's why I was able to rip it off there. I mean, I've tested other mid-drive bikes up really steep hills and never had any problems. I did that with the Bike Tricks Stunner X. I climbed some really steep stuff, no issue. I guess if you're looking at a mid-drive with a really, really powerful motor, Make sure the other components on the bike are quality and can handle it. Now, if you're looking at buying a bike, hopefully you found these little off-road hill climb clips useful. And I seem to be riding just more and more powerful e-bikes every day. They keep getting stronger and faster. And I find that when I'm doing off-road stuff, I really, really don't need that much power. So I guess really think about where you're gonna ride, how much power you might actually need to climb or to go where you wanna go. I think, about, I think for me, about 2,000 watts. 1,000 watt in each motor is probably about that sweet spot to get me 180 pounds anywhere I wanna go. And this video is just about power. There's all kinds of other stuff to consider. Tires, bike weight, the frame design, and also suspension are things to consider as well. But hopefully you enjoy the video today. It's all I got. See you in the next one. All right, one final test. One more test, because I know you're gonna to wanna to know how much rear motor power does it take to get up this hill? So we're gonna try one more. The 3000 plus peak watts on that rear motor of this wired Freedom bike. See if it'll carry us up here, throttle only, no pedaling. Keep in mind, I do have uh, 24 inch wheels on this bike as well. So maybe a little added torque, but this bike peaks over 3000. Let's give it a shot here. I'm not really gonna get uh, too much of a running start at it. We're just gonna twist the throttle and go. See what 3000 watts feels like. All right, now we'll hit it. Holy cow, it's really, really easy. That was the easiest one of all of them. Easiest of all of them, but I'll tell you this. I really had to kind of lean forward to make sure I didn't wheelie up that hill. So much torque on the back, so light in the front, these tall bars. 
If I would have been leaning back, I might have risked the front end kind of coming up. But there you go. If you got 3,000 watts on the rear motor, you can climb those hills.